welcome. I'm Rob Pitts. I chair the Board of Commissioners of Fulton County. I'm delighted to, that you're all here with us this afternoon. Um, in short, this will conclude this portion of the absentee ballot process in Fulton County, with the exception of approximately 1,200 what we call cured absentee ballots. I want to first thank the Atlanta Hawks for allowing us to use this magnificent facility. They've been partners of ours, uh, great, great partners. I also want to thank all of our volunteers, and in particular, Ms. Shea Moss, who is here, who's been working in coordinating what all of these people have been doing uh, throughout, this, throughout this process. It's been uh, pleasing for us. Uh, our goal early on was to ensure that the voters in Fulton County had a pleasing, pleasant, easy uh, voting experience on November 3rd, and we accomplished that. Were there a few issues regarding absentee ballots? Certainly, but we rose to the occasion and accomplished what we wanted to accomplish so that I believe that what we have here in Fulton County now will be a blueprint for other jurisdictions to use as they figure out how to handle elections. I'm joined this afternoon by one of my colleagues, uh, Commissioner Joe Karn, our county manager, and the man of the hour, uh, Mr. Richard Barron, who is our Director of Registration and Elections. And before uh, Mr. Barron comes up and, and gives you a little more, a few more details, when we first began uh, looking at uh, November 3rd, based upon uh, the challenges that we faced uh, back in June, we knew that we had work to do. And we put a team together, uh, internal team, external team, and it's been a really a, 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 a a great example of how we do things in Fulton County, Georgia. And I could not be more pleased with the results that we have here today. Nor, though, could I have ever imagined that Fulton County, Georgia would mean at this point in time, at this moment in history, what it appears to, uh, to be with respect to the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. So I'm excited to be here, and thank you all for being here with us this afternoon. With that, I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, Richard Barron, our Director of Registration and Elections, to go into more detail about the process and where we are at this point in time. Mr. Barron. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see everyone here. Uh, we've So far, we've counted 100, uh, 145,748 ballots, so we will be sending those over shortly. We also will be uh, processing 3,610 provisional ballots uh, by tomorrow. And if we receive any military overseas ballots, we'll, we'll do that. We also have uh, approximately 1,200 cured ballots that were signature mismatches that we went through the extra research. We went to the original voter registration applications. And so they, those qualified and we will be um, doing those this afternoon, and then that will conclude all of the absentee process for us. Uh, once, once all of that goes over to our English Street Warehouse, of course, I've talked to everyone about the vote review panel. Vote review panel, once the scans go through, they look at voter intent on any ballots that are flagged and determine how the voter wanted to vote. And the Fulton County Republican Party, Fulton County Democratic Party, appoint members to the, to the vote review panels. Um, the other thing I'd like to echo Chairman Pitts's <coughs> um, thanks to the Atlanta Hawks for everything that they've done for us. Uh, we, we started working with them in June after the, after the June primary, and we've been, uh, we've been working with them ever since. We had a fantastic early voting this time. We, we voted more than 315,000 early voters, and the Hawks were a big portion of that. Um, it was, they never had any, any lines here. It was, they could process so many voters. So I just do, I just want to thank Mr. Coonan and the owner 
of the Hawks and all of their staff who are a joy to work with. Um, I also need to thank my staff because they've worked tireless, tire, tirelessly since the end of probably, I guess it was, well, before March. Uh, before that, election was canceled uh, during early voting. And um, they've been through a lot. Uh, we've had uh, 28 COVID infections now this year. Um, we lost a member of our staff in the spring. And we had, um, we just had somebody else uh, test positive yesterday. So that was uh, a major challenge for us this year. But we were able to, to come through this November election, even with those 25 COVID infections in our warehouse. And we had a good solid election day. And so I can take any questions. Or do, do you want to speak, say anything, Jake? No, OK. How many votes is going to be posted on the website? So we, we've posted, uh, I believe it was 138,000, I think 646. That, that's the number that's in my head. I, I, that, if you go to our website, you can see if that's the accurate number. Those have been through ballot adjudication, so the remainder will go on there. I've got 145,748 that I just counted on the scanners, and there will probably be um, another 1,200 added to that uh, be for the vote review panel this afternoon. So that's about seven, at least 7,000 more votes that will be posted. Yes, that's accurate. Well, there, there are overseas military in that count, yes. But we have up until tomorrow at 5 p.m. to receive overseas and military ballots. And how many overseas military ballots are you going to receive? Well, we don't know what we're going to receive. So we, when we receive them, they, just, they get put in with all the other ballots. So we don't keep a separate track of them. When is the deadline for voting for overseas military That's at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Close of business. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.